All right, Filthy. How's it going? What's up, Ken? Man, you know, just getting it in, man. You know? Back again. Checking back in with you again. Yeah, back again, man. Huh? Back again, man. You stay busy. You stay grinding. Always. Got to, man. That's the only way you're going to get ahead in life, man. You got to... Uh... You gotta stay working, man. You gotta stay progressing, man. That's what it's about. When you get content, that's when you get content, man, that's when they forget about you. That's it, man. That's real. Uh, what y'all are you working on right now? Um, uh, keep it real. I got an album coming out uh, on my birthday. I was trying to um, do a deluxe to the solidified album, but the label didn't want me to do that. They wanted me to do a whole another tape. So I just turned in. Uh, I just did a few more songs, added it to it, and just made it a full another tape. What's the name of it? Um, it's called Motivational Purpose. That's my first time. That's my first time telling anybody the name of it. People have been asking me. I ain't never said nothing. I ain't want nobody to steal it or, or they say I stole it from them or anything. I got the whole artwork cover, everything done, merch and everything coming. I just been keeping quiet about it. You got any features on there? Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 gonna let them see when it come out. I'm gonna see when it come out. I got some features on there though. Uh when did you say it was dropping? January thirtieth for my birthday. January thirtieth. Okay, that's what's up. I seen you have a verse with Mr. Fab coming up. Versus, yep. Uh we just waiting on the date. Um, cause we trying to just we trying to do it big for the city. You get what I'm saying? So um between me and him, you know, um, should bring out a lot of people. So we're just trying to get the right venue, lock in the right venue for the uh, for the event. But yeah, it should be coming up either, I think, I think this month should be, should be before the year up though. Okay, how'd all that come together? Um, It's a guy uh, that's actually locked up, who's uh, behind it, uh, Bands Before Riches. They did a few of them already uh in the bay area with a few different artists or whatever so they reached out to us to do it and uh the reason why it's been taking so long with me and him because uh, like i said our fan base is crazy you uh, know you know so we're just trying to make sure that we just don't want to get the people anything you know we want a big a big event big venue you know great night you know us just celebrating our catalog and you know our years of making good music Sounds dope, man. Will this be your first verses? Uh, yeah. It's not like it's not like a rap battle. It's like song for song. But it's not like a they're gonna pick a winner or nothing like that. It's just you know we getting up there and, and you know enjoying life. Well, that ought to be dope, man. I uh, I definitely look forward to it. Hopefully, you guys can get it out out there soon. Yeah, yeah, it should be soon. Um, had to. Uh, talk to a few people, you know, to, uh, to get it done. Well, that's what's up. Dope shit, man. I think some of the big news, the biggest news with you is that you were actually arrested not too long ago. Uh, not too long ago. Maybe we talked about that in the last interview, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh... I, no, I did, this happened after our last interview. Oh, it did? The feds and everything? Huh? With the with the Fed case or something you got going you have going on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was after our last interview. Yep. Okay, yeah, I got arrested in August. Yeah. Okay, you know, are you facing some serious time for that? Uh, I don't know what I'm facing right now. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm facing some serious time. Uh, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know. You know. We gonna leave it in my lawyer's hands. I got the best lawyer in Las Vegas, and uh, we gonna leave it in God's hands. And whatever it is, whatever it may be, you know, we gonna stand on ten. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I see all types of rappers getting indicted and arrested, and it just seems like there's a huge target on rappers' backs right now. It's ridiculous. It is. I think it really comes from like the pandemic, and the police don't got nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? And I think like, like sitting back and trying to target rappers or whatever. Even when even when they grabbed me, they told me that you know that um, 
you know, rapping is, um, you know, a very hard job, you get what I'm saying? So, and, you know, they brought up all the other rappers and what they was going through and trying to get information or whatever. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But, um, yeah, I think all this just started going on with all the actual indictments and all that type of stuff like that, like around the pandemic time or whatever. But my case has nothing to do with that, though. I was just in the wrong place the wrong time. And due to my background, I wasn't supposed to be a, be there. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. You know, with rappers being targeted all the time now, is it like different for you? Like, how is it changing how you move around and how you operate? Um, due to my case, like my travel restricted right now, so I got to like, report every day uh, for me to be able to be released out. Um, you know, I move how I move. I, I've been moving smooth. My case don't really got nothing to do with rap. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, yeah, my, my case don't got nothing to do with rap. But uh, like I said, I was just in the wrong place, for the wrong time. I kind of, I kind of was like, um, what is it called? Um, stereotype. It's kind of stereotype, you know. So, uh, and by me being stereotype in the wrong place, wrong time. Um, someone end up putting the people in my business. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I end up. Yeah. I seen you did a few songs with Young Dolph. Yeah, I mean, Dolph got like four songs. Like, like four songs. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my boy, man. How'd you guys meet? Uh, we met through guys at Empire. Yeah, we met, met through guys at Empire. Guys, he always told me I reminded him of Dolph. And then one day we met up, I came to the studio, did the song, and did the video. I think we got like, we got like two two videos also. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was sad news to hear about him getting killed, man. For sure, you know, especially getting killed in your hometown. I mean, just getting killed, period. You know, it's a fucked up situation. You got kids, got family, got a record label, you know. Yeah, man, I, you know, I was just on my way to do an interview and I started getting text messages and... Started seeing the news and everything, and yeah, I ended up, I ended up getting a text from my nigga that fuck with niggas in Memphis before it even hit the news. I had already got the text what had happened. Same thing with Nip. Uh, I was doing an interview when Nip had got killed, and uh, my partner that was with me at the interview, someone from LA had already told him before he even hit the tabloids and shit. You know, it's a fucked up situation for Nip and Dolph, man. Rest in peace to both of them, though, for sure. Sadly, this has become a more of like a regular thing in hip hop where rappers are being killed, especially in their own hometown. Vine, I knew Vine. I met Vine before also. I met Nip before. Uh, I, I had met, met Pop Smoke. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy in the world right now. You know, all the, the EDB is over with. The, uh, you know, so... People robbing people, they looting, they trying to survive. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, they probably thought the EDD was forever. They might be in a 10-year lease on an apartment, had to pay the bills, ain't got no money. You get what I'm saying? There's all type of different, you know, reasons why people do what they do. I seen that, it, you know, when you said that, you made me think of the news that's going on uh, in Northern Cali right now. Like, there's a lot of big, like, 50, 100 people running in the stores right now and just taking whatever now. Yeah, I seen that too. People getting killed too doing that shit too. People getting killed, going to jail, all type of shit. You know, so uh, I think that was for the, uh, they was protesting. It was protesting for somebody. Uh, I think it was for that, that kid uh, that had killed some people and he didn't get charged with it. So I think they was protesting for that. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's definitely been, you know, a lot of more robberies I've seen in L.A., a lot more videos, a lot of more. L.A. been like that, though. Not like with the looting or whatever, but L.A. just been turned up to this period. You got to you gotta move right in L.A. Like, I fuck with L.A. tough, you know. I got a lot of homies out there, but L.A. just, L.A. is L.A., you know. A lot of people can't make it in L.A. A lot of people can't. Hang out in LA. A lot of people, you know, can't be in the hood in LA. 
different. Like, unless you're getting like a storied or, or um, you know, shit like that. But, but LA, you know, LA been like that. That's that's that. You know, that's kind of separate them from us. Yeah. Okay. I seen in an interview one time that you said you preferred CDs over streaming. Uh, it was a, it was a to me it was a different time, like uh, because you know with the CDs or whatever before the Instagram and the MySpace and all that, you really had to touch the people. You really had to be out at these open mic shows. You had to be out the trunk or be on the block and and. Uh, you know, with the Instagram, you can contact all these artists through a DM. Uh, you can go viral. Uh, you know, it was really, I was out there really passing out flyers and CDs and posters, hanging up posters on, on um, posts and stuff, you know, trying to create a, um, a core fan base. So now it's kind of different. It's not that I, I, I picked that over there. I, you know, that's where I come from. That's where I came from with this music shit. So... You know, um, like I really don't even deal with like the inner Instagram shit too much. Like you see, I remember you posting shit like that. Unless I, unless I have something like a show or something like that. Like if I, I wouldn't even have Instagram if I didn't do music. Do you think there's more money in CDs or is there more money now in streaming? Um, I mean, shit. It's not that it's more money, it's, 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 if that's what I'm worried about. It's just the simple fact that, like, when niggas was going platinum back in the day, you actually bought a million CDs. You get what I'm saying? You bought a million copies. People was actually going to iTunes and downloading your CD for ten dollars. You know, um, I just felt like the, the the fans was a lot, you know, into it more than now. It's all like with streaming and the internet and all this is like always a way around something. Like you could buy fake streams. You couldn't buy a fake person buying buying fake CDs. You get what I'm saying? You can buy fake numbers on YouTube videos and streams and all this stuff. Like it's all you know, people can always find a way around everything. You get what I'm saying? To try to make themselves look bigger and better than who they is. But back then, like you really had to go buy a CD. You had to go to the store, you had to go purchase it. You get what I'm saying? He was really buying it on iTunes. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. It uh, it's definitely changed things. You know, it's like uh, you kind of took the hard grind of. It took the hard yeah. grind about it, about of it. You you know how many like, like older rappers that don't know nothing about streaming and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it probably stagnated them to like, man, I don't even want to rap no more. And this like, this is different. You know what I'm saying? So, but I still press up CDs for all my all my new music to this day. I still press up CDs. Just for myself to even have these hard copies. Because there's still fans that I go do meet and greets and pull up with 20 CDs and want me to sign all of them. You know what I'm saying? So, it's people that still, you know, everybody ain't got a uh, Bluetooth or, or in the car. Some people still got, you know, CD decks. You know what I'm saying? So, you, gotta, you can't, can't forget where you came from. What are some extra ways that an up and coming artist can make some money selling music or or you know, ways that are around you know, around their music career? That they can make some money? Yeah. Like like what kind of merch? What kind of I mean I press up merch for all of my CDs. I don't just use rap as an income. Rap is a stepping stone to do different things. Uh I have a uh I sell merch. Uh, I breed dogs. Uh, I also just started a, a, a podcast. I have a, a hairline. I got a filthy lot of kids organization uh, for giving back to the community. Uh, I got artists myself. I got like eight, nine different, uh, you know, revenues coming in. I also seen that lately... You've had some issues with DB the general. Um, I wouldn't say it's lately. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's issues. I would say it's um, you know, attention. Uh, you know how. You know how a kid in school. Like acts up, 
for attention. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, want to be the class clown, want to be seen, want to be heard, want the girls to like them, want to be the coolest guy, and you know, all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you got to go home and deal with, you know, your parents once you get suspended or expelled. With that being said, I wouldn't even call it like no issues or whatever. The guy just did an interview, asked him to be my friend, but in the same interview, disrespecting me. So um, I had did an interview also and they brought it up. And I was just like, you know, dude, just talk too much, man. Uh, and you know, I don't plan on being his friend. So he couldn't accept that because I had put past issues with other artists to the side and apparently that's what he wanted me to do with him so because i didn't want to do that with him um you know you know you know it's it's, it's all about who want to be who you know what i'm saying so you do an interview and you you basically asking me to be your friend and then boom you pop up with a diss song and then boom you pop up with an album it's good marketing, but it was good marketing, but it was trash. So um, when they telling me about the song or whatever, or whatever, uh, I go to his page and I'm about to, uh, you know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm about to, uh, I don't know if I'm about to make a song or what it was. So I go to his page and I'm like, man, I'm not about to be arguing with this guy. This guy's not on my caliber. We're apparently not shopping at the same places. Apparently not fucking the same bitches. Apparently not having the same money, not driving the same cars, not wearing the same jewelry. What the fuck do I look like making a diss record about you or even going back and forth with you? So really, I was just telling niggas to leave me alone, bro. I already know what it's about. It's not even him because he don't even know me. He don't know me. So, um, uh, it's, it's people around him that have an issue that don't rap. And, uh, you know, they thinking that this is a good strategy for them to help him blow up or whatever. But nobody's checking for that dude. And there's nothing he could do with me. He can't, he can't do nothing with me, bro. Like, if, if I would have made a diss record, it would have been 10 times better than whatever the fuck he was doing. But, you know. I just be trying to keep shit positive, bro, you know? Like I said, like when I came home, I told everybody, leave me alone, focus on myself, y'all do y'all, I'm gonna do me. But a lot of these niggas just be mad that I don't wanna be their friends, you know? And it's, it's, that's just what it is. I don't, you know, I don't wanna be a friend. That's just what it is. I've seen rappers use, you know, different tactics and everything for marketing or to try to market their music. You know, what do you think when you see something like that? I mean, it seems to be pretty common in hip hop where, uh, you know, dudes will have a beef or something. I mean, in this shit, man, like everything is unpredictable. Like, I didn't really see the disc record or album coming right after you just asked to be my friend in the interview. So, uh, you know, and like I said, it's not him, it's the, it's the people. He's a pawn. He can play like a puppet. They're telling him what to do. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm my own boss. You know what I'm saying? So I do what I want to do. And um, um, and everything I do is sober-minded. You feel me? I can't smoke or anything. So with that being said, you know, um, he's over there just running with what anybody tells him and just really making himself look stupid. So I'm looking at his page. I'm like, this boy got a fake jury. This boy got a fake designer. What do I look like? arguing with this guy. But hey, you want to be famous? Let's see what fake watch questions got to say about this. You want to be famous? Let's see what Gucci say about these outfits that you're wearing on here. But then want to criticize me for, ah, uh, he can't rap. All he raps about is jewelry and clothes. I mean, apparently you care about it enough to buy fake shit to try to keep up. So that's crazy that you would criticize what I rap about, but then go outside and buy this fake shit and actually post it on the internet for the world to see. Like, you can't you can't do that. So I'm like, why would I rap against this person? Why would I say something about him in the song? He's apparently he's apparently trying to get on. I'm on. He's trying to get on. You know what I'm saying? So I just left it alone, bro. I just left it alone. 
Fake watch busters. They've been going after quite a few people I've seen. They ain't never went, they ain't never went after me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> they went after me, man. It was good. Shout out fake watch busters, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I'm not going to be making no diss record. Aside from a, a DB being on fake watch busters, what do you think when you see someone on fake watch busters? Um, it's not necessarily that everybody's on there buying fake watches to try to be something they not. You could have been sold something fake and not even know. It, 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 it can happen. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you're gonna, you might have bought your first Rolex from a jeweler that was shady. That's not the scenario with him, though. He knew what he was buying. You get what I'm saying? He doesn't have the money to afford those type of things, so he knew what he was buying. Like, you could look at the clothes, the outfits. He got like, <laughs> like I looked at that shit. I'm like, well, I'm not about to rap. I'm not, I'm not about to do it. Like, but yeah, uh, a jeweler can sell you something fake, and you're not knowing because this is your first Rolex, so you will never know. Is that a common thing? Is that something you hear about? Jewelers being shady? I've dealt with, with shady jewelers before also. Not necessarily buying fake jewelry, um, but I've, um, like, if you're not getting, like, papers for all your diamonds and uh, testing everything, they could try to slide something in there or give you something you didn't ask for or didn't pay for, you know, so... Everything when it comes to like big time jewelry and everything comes with paperwork. I mean, yes, you should you should request that before you purchase it. Your, your stones should be certified. Uh, your Rolexes should have uh, cards. Um, you should be able to put insurance and on the jewelry and everything. All right, because when you get it to get insured, they're gonna appraise it and make sure it's real, right? Of course. Yeah, so that would be the best way, you know what I'm saying, for anybody out there to make sure. For sure. You brought up Ghazi earlier, man, and, and this dude is like, man, when it comes to, like, independent artists, he seems to be, like, the the everybody's favorite person to work with. There's really no other label that independent artists deal with. Oh, Okay. What other label does independent artists deal with? I'm I'm not familiar with all the with all the labels and everything. So there you go. And then also major labels deal with him also. Like it's major labels that don't know what to do with their artists that they would bring their artists to him to be distributed also. So you yeah. might go in the office and see a platinum plaque on the wall from a major artist because it's certain things that he can do that the major labels are not doing. I see. I see. How long you guys been working together? I've been working on Gazi since 2012. That's what's up. Yeah, since 2012. Are all your projects through them? Nah, um, I didn't start until 2012. I've been dropping CDs since 2008. Was it 2012 or 2016? I believe it was, well, I don't know if it was 12. I think it was 2016. Yeah, because cause, yeah, cause 2012 was a um, Trippin' for Life album. Yeah, it was 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah. I believe I might be wrong. But basically, I was just dropping my um, series of tapes, just distributed through the company, and he was seeing how much money I was making every month. And he was like, man, we need to drop an official album. And then uh, I, I recorded a single and I just made the album around the single. And then that was my first album. Like I dropped through him and we actually like pushed everything else. I was just putting out and pressing up myself, but he was just distributing. We were talking about Nipsey Hussle a little bit earlier. what did you think when you heard about the news about Nip passing? And I was actually doing an interview with No Vultures in Oakland and uh, my friend had told me in the middle of the interview, like, hey, man, he said Nipsey got killed. Uh, but when I heard about the news and I seen the video and everything, you know, it was, uh, and she was, she was crazy or whatever. But, um, yeah, man, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't wish death on 
on nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? But shit be crazy out there in the streets, bro. Yeah, man, that was uh, it was surprising. I didn't expect that one, you know. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I couldn't believe it at first. No, not in hell. Like, hell no. Nah. Like, hell no. Nah. You know? Did you guys ever get a chance to work? Um, We had a song. Not. Uh, it was like another artist with him on a song. And I remember one day, me and Cookie Money, we was um, in LA. We were supposed to pull up to the studio and knock something out. I think something had happened that day. But it was all love and mutual respect every time we seen each other. I think the last time I seen him, I was in, we, we was in Vegas and uh, I was with Meek, I was with Meek Mill and he was there and James Harden. Uh, we had to take a picture and Ben Baller. That's right. I believe him and Meek were supposed to do an album or something or were working on something at the time. Yeah, I believe they got an album probably. I believe they got an album. Probably ain't put it out. But they got, they got music together for sure. Yeah. Gucci Man has is, is been signing a lot of artists lately. And I, I remember from before, I know that you guys had some kind of a relationship. Yeah, I fuck with Gucci. That's my favorite rapper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dope. How, how'd you guys meet? Um, when we first met, it was in Seattle. My boy out there had to do a show. He booked Gucci. And uh, him, Coach K, and Young Scooter had came. This was right before Young Scooter had took off. Um, we met, we did a song, and then we got an old song called Maserati, me, Gucci, and uh, Scooter. And then, um, what, it was something in between then. It was something in between, I forgot, if I'm not mistaken. But then he came to the Bay, like, a couple years ago, and, um, uh, and reached out and we had did a record and a video and then he had brought me out to the club that night also. Like usually when all the big artists come to Oakland, like I'm who they grab. Like from me to Lucci to fucking Travis Scott, um, Migos, Lil Baby, um, you name it. When he came, did he have like a big entourage with him? What's crazy is it's the story behind that. Um, when he came, he was just one deep and he got out the car in the rain and shot the video on seminary. In the rain. It's pouring out rain out there. He got out there, shot the video. We went to the studio, did the verse. Um, young T.O. was on the hook of that song, but he didn't know Gucci was pulling up. So we in the studio, Gucci just pull up. And he looked like, like, nigga, why you didn't tell me Gucci was coming? So Gucci go in there and do the verse. He had already had the song, so I don't know if he wrote to it or not. But he laid the verse down and he come out, he like, you fucking with that one? Like, nah, I'll do another one. I'm like, man, this shit was hard. He like, you want to do the verse, you want to do the video at the show, or you want to do it at the block? I'm like, go to the hood. So we went to the hood, and I gave it him and the security. And then he told me to meet him at the show afterwards. So we did the video, and I went to the city. And I had some people with me. And he was like, um, man, I fuck with you, filthy. Like all of them can't come. Uh, it was, it was, it wasn't like my immediate people with some other people or whatever. I was actually trying to bring some other rappers to perform also. And he was like, nah. He was like, you see how I beat? I beat to the neck. I ain't got time for somebody else fucking up and they fall back on me. Like, all, all, all I need is one person. He had the security with him, that was it. But I was trying to bring some rappers to perform also because he was bringing me out and I was going to bring him out. And, uh, he, he, I mean, he wasn't having it. What'd you think when Gucci Man really just had only the one person with him? Was that surprising? Um, it'd be, I'd be like that too at times. It's kind of like how the situation happened, you know, at the, um, at the Devin Haney fight. I was with one person. Like, I don't really be moving like that, but it was just, you know, a lot of people in the building. You could have ran into anybody. You know what I'm saying? But, um, shit, I wasn't moving around today, me and my artists. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that it's the best way to move or the safest way. It's just like, you know, when you're handling business, you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. 
how does your hood react when you bring someone like Gucci man to the hood? Uh, I said that in a song. I said the hood knew it was real when I brought Gucci. Uh, I mean, they loved it like every time. Like Jim Jones had been to the hood. Lucci then came through. Uh, Gucci man, who was I brought up here? Dolph, all type of people. You feel me? They love it because I'm putting on for the neighborhood, like on the worldwide. You feel me? Type shit like. It's so many fans that go to my block just to see the street songs. I say it so much in the song. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what I do it for. I, I wrote my first rap on the block. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get off the block. So for me to come back and, you know, not forget where I come from. Like, I don't hang outside all day. What would I, what would I be doing hanging outside all day right now? What, what would that prove? Nothing. You get what I'm saying? The, the goal is to get out the hood. You get what I'm saying? So I go back, I do my charity events. I go back when I shoot videos. I go back when I see my family. You get what I'm saying? I go back and shoot videos. But I'm not just hanging outside, standing on the corner, doing nothing all day for what? Like, it would just be a target. It makes no sense. The, the goal was to get out the hood. I got businesses to run. I got kids to raise. You get what I'm saying? So that's stupid, you know? But these people, they, um, they mislead the youth. Man, he ain't the real nigga. He don't be outside no more. I ain't supposed to be. And then if I am outside all day and something happened, well, why was he out there? And it's like a lose-lose situation. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, But me, like, you know, I, I'm smart, so I'm not falling into your ways of trying to trick me off the street. So if I'm out there and I get caught with a pistol, I go to jail. If I'm out there, somebody kill me and I die. Okay, but I'm out there to prove to y'all that I'm real. But then if I die or go to jail, then why was he out there? You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. It's crazy the way people think, man. You know, I think people got fucked up way of thinking, man, for real. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, you're not real if you don't go there, you know, and hang out. And you're stupid if you do. You know, I talk about all that in my music. If, if people really fuck with me and, and fan of my music, you'll hear all that shit. Motherfuckers say you Hollywood when you leave the hood. And, 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 and you know, if you move to Hollywood, you get what I'm saying? But if I'm in the hood, I mean, any, anything is liable to happen in the hood. You you can walk past somebody at the store and not even see them and don't speak to them. And this person be ready to kill you over some dumb shit because you ain't say hi or speak. But you really didn't even see the person. Oh, he acting funny. Okay, I'm about to rob his ass. Oh, he... oh. Oh, he did it. I'm about to do this because you know, when you're a rapper, you know every, you know is everybody trying to get something off you. You know, if if I can rob him, I can go viral. If I kill him, I can do this. If I beat him up, I can do this. You get what I'm saying? So it's like everybody know you, but you don't know everybody. You get what I'm saying? And everything is a come up. I could drop an earring. Oh, I knocked him out, took his earring. Jump on Instagram, get on World Star, Camp Upon, whatever. You get what I'm saying? Somebody might get one of my little homie chains or something. Oh, man, I stole Filthy Rich chain. And they pick up the news, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Everything's come up. Everybody want to come up off you. So it's like one sign of fakeness with me, we done. It ain't no. In this life, you're going you gonna to get your ass triple crossed. You know what I'm saying? And you keep accepting the, the fake shit. I ain't going to go off with somebody. Somebody be like, man, don't interview a camp phone, man. He this, he this. I'm not going to go off with the next nigga said. He might have been there with you because you may have been a certain way. I'm going to let him show me how he is. And if I do an interview when I don't like it, I ain't going to do it again. That's just how I judge people. I don't go off with somebody else's sake. But you might, he might have been fake with you because you might be a fake nigga. You know what I'm saying? He might have did some fake shit to you because he knew he can get over on you and do that to you. That don't mean he going to do it to me. You know what I'm saying? He might look at me as a real nigga or be like, okay, Filthy don't fuck with it like that. He ain't that accessible. He ain't that loose. He ain't that gullible. He ain't that, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you got one time to show me any type of flaw. I'm done with you. Family members, friends, I don't give a fuck who you is because, you feel me? I'm trying to last, not coming last. You know what I'm saying? One false move and you'll be out this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Playing with these bitches, they give up your location, set you up, you get what I'm saying? These niggas are double back on you. There's all type of crazy shit that go on. I mean, it should be behind closed doors that people don't know. Nine times out of ten, niggas don't be even be, like, rappers don't be getting robbed. Like, they should be getting broken into. 
and getting stolen type shit. You know what I'm saying? You might have a friend around and think that he cool and paying attention to everything you do, watching your moves, and then when you leave, you get what I'm saying? Drop it low. So, motherfucker just gotta, you know, use that instinct. This is the same type of instinct I had on, on, on the block, so. I just, you know, incorporate it the same way into, into how I handle this rap shit. You mentioned you got a lot of artists. Like 10 to 12 artists, 10, 9, 12, something like that, something crazy. You see, uh, to the band, Skinny T, Lil Steve, Lil Trey, Just Bang, Roscoe Fetty, um, Loso, Dollar Dang, Pretty Boy, my nephew, uh, Jay Money. Shit. Fuck, uh, Mac Guy Debo, my nigga Visa. Shit, bro, I don't wanna, I don't wanna forget nobody, but. It's crazy, uh, you know, and we we dropping, we, we we working like the oh no limit. You get what I'm saying? We got three tapes about to drop this month, the 7th, the 17th, and the 24th. Um, and then another tape on the 7th of January, then my album on the 30th, then uh, in February 14th. Got another tape. We working, bro. I'm trying to drop like, I'm trying to drop like at least two or three tapes a month from from my artists. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we doing. You wear a lot of hats. Yeah. You got your hands in a lot of stuff, man. How do you find time for everything? Um, I work, bro. I sleep when I'm dead. You know what I'm saying? I work. I, you know, that's that that shit drives me and motivates me to get up. I get up like six in the morning every day, bro. I might go to sleep maybe around like twelve, wake up at six and I'm gone. Until the next day, same thing. Every day. Every day I'm doing something. If it's breeding dogs, if it's doing doing something, I'm doing something every day, bro. Like every day I'm not sitting around doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Every day, bro. Yeah, you know. That's that's my drive, you feel me? So, you know, I'm trying to leave my legacy for my kid, you know what I'm saying? And um, uh, you know, I don't get tired of, I don't get tired of uh, getting money, you know what I'm saying? You know, and money will mature you also, man. It will make you, you know, grow up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't you got a lot to lose now, so you don't really got you don't got time for all the bullshit, man. So Yeah. No, I hear you. Definitely, man. Um, you know, man, that's what's up, man. You know, 12 artists. I think it's 12 artists you said? Yeah. I mean, something like that. I can't, however many I counted, I'm, I'm, I hope I ain't leave nobody out, man. If I did, I'm sorry, but there's so many. You get what I'm saying? But we working. We got albums already turned in, artwork already turned in, videos already turned in, release dates. This shit easy. I'm showing them this shit easy. You get what I'm saying? Me and my artist just bang. We just knocked out a CD in like two days. You get what I'm saying? Um, he already got another album already turned into the label. And working on the second part of the album, just knocked out already the other day. Uh, Tudor got an album coming out January 7th. He just dropped the album with Cash Click Book. We got another one coming out. I think 90 days after that, already turned in HBO 2. Already been shot four, four videos off that. Lil Steve video come, I mean, Lil Steve album come out on the 24th. Already turned in. Videos already shot. Loso album come out on the 17th. Video out right now. Um, Skinny T, he got an album. Me and Skinny got an album. Skinny got an album with um, Tudor. Tudor got an album with Murdoch. And Skinny, uh, shit. We working, right? Roscoe album about to come out pretty well. I'm coming out February 14th. My nephew, his album already done, but you know, he um he's still a kid, he's 12 years old. So um he got into some trouble in school the other day. So we you don't know, got some other things to focus on than doing music right now. We gotta gotta get back on track. But um Being that you're doing all this other stuff. Yeah. That that uh, isn't rapping. Do you plan on retiring from rap or? Like I said, the the, the tape that's coming out, 
and on my birthday, some of the songs was supposed to be for a deluxe of the previous album, Solidify, that came out. They don't want me to do that. They want me to drop a whole new album. So every time I try to, every time I try to retire, like I want to be a regular nigga now. I don't want to wear designer every day. I don't want to drive foreigners every day. I don't want to wear jewelry every day. I want to just be a regular nigga, bro. You feel me? And focus on my artists and everything else I'm doing. You get what I'm saying? So I can give them the full attention. I did it. I did it already. I did. I did. I did a lot. I did everything already. I just want to be a regular nigga, live a regular life. You feel me? Take care of my family. Um, watch my kids go to college and shit like that. And watch my artists succeed. But um, that's why. That's where my my. That's where I'm at with it. But they won't let me retire with the music because you know I motivate a lot of people. I got a big fan base. You know, uh, and and niggas really ain't following up behind it to like step in them shoes. So, Cause instead of making good music, niggas want to diss niggas and shit. But really, you know, you all you doing is stunting your own growth. You get what I'm saying? That's what you're doing. You're hurting yourself. You're not helping yourself. Um, so that's why I'm at with it, bro. I, I would love to retire. If I don't, if I don't this year, I, I'm for sure next year. I'm gonna still like do shows and verses and shit like that. But I just like, like I don't want to like be like forced to keep putting out albums and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to take away from my artists to where somebody might call and be like, oh, I want to book your artist for a show. And I'm like, or I'm like, damn, book me. Like, no, I don't even want to be in the same, you know what I'm saying? You can't book me or, 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 or you feel me? Or me to even feel like that because I'm still rapping. You know what I'm saying? Rather, rather just be focused on them. Like, I don't want to be the only one that shot. You know what I'm saying? I've never planned on rapping forever anyway. So. I want to see my young niggas do their thing, man, take off and live their dreams, man, be successful. Does the rapping take up a lot of time? Yes, it does. It takes up a lot of time. And not saying that I can't do it, because as I, you can see, I, it's easy. You get what I'm saying? It's just, you know, I'm more I'm more focused on the CEO side now, the business side now, the A&R side now. I ain't really too much focused on the rapping side like that. I did it. I've been dropping music since 2008. I got over a hundred CDs. Like, like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? Just keep rapping forever? I don't want to do that. You know. So. Yeah. What are your plans for the future? My plans for the future, um, shit, man. Hopefully, you know, they release my um, passport so I can uh, finish, you know, going up country and seeing, you know, taking some trips and shit, seeing, you know, seeing the world. And um, uh, you know, just I'm always I'm just planning on just keep being successful, man. Just keep being successful, man. The black mogul, you get what I'm saying? Entrepreneur. That's all I'm on, man. I'm on all positive shit, man. I don't I ain't on no negative shit. You get what I'm saying? You know, I'm gonna be a man and hold my own and stand up for sure. But that ain't that ain't what I'm that ain't what I'm just focused on, you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm focused on positive shit, man. You know, that's why a lot of these niggas be mad because um they can't sometimes they can't get my attention or they just wanna be in my they wanna be where I'm at. Do you think that being in the music business is more there's more snakes than like just regular life? Of course. Like I said, everything is a come up. If we can get this, we can get this. Like even when niggas that that niggas fake fuck with you for a buzz. I done had so many niggas I fuck with and that didn't know shit about music and help them get a buzz and niggas forget that shit. And feel like they bigger than you or forget all that shit. Like I, man, niggas, like I done helped every nigga around me just to be 1,000 with you. Even the niggas that don't like me. You get what I'm saying? But it, it was because I do it on my own time and not when they say, you feel me? They wanted to use me for their self game. They don't want to use me. They want to abuse me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, he won't do another verse for me. He won't do another video for me. He won't do this. He won't do this. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 he changed his number. I don't got his number. Or he won't post my album. He don't follow us. Or he don't, man, listen, bro. You niggas ain't posting my shit. You niggas ain't promoting my shit. You niggas ain't pushing my shit. And even if y'all was, you feel me? Are you doing it out of genuine love to where if I don't see your shit and don't post it, are you going to be mad? You get what I'm saying? If you really fuck me, you could have been like, hey, bro, throw this up for me. I, I do that all the time. I, I help all the 
upcoming artists coming out of Oakland. You got what I'm saying? Like on some real shit. So it's just it's just niggas wanna use you, bro, to their own self game. Like if it ain't if they not benefiting off of it, it ain't genuine. So niggas trying to capitalize off your buzz and feed off of it and trying to get their buzz where yours at. When you don't do it, when you don't fuck with them, they mad at you. Yeah, I've definitely, you know, I've, you know, I mean, I run across the same things, probably not nowhere near the level that you do. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's, there's dudes who I've, you know, dudes who I knew or dudes are like local dudes who I've helped out and gave them a bunch of free posts or whatever. Then one time I don't, and it's like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. They don't remember all the thousand times you did it. They only remember the one time you did it. Right. So, and you know. Not even realizing that they probably ain't even did nothing for you. And that's how, and that's just what it is. Uh, you know, that's why I just stay away from all the shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I stay away from everything, bro. I just focus on what I got going on. Me and my artists, every day I'm doing something. I'm doing something right now. Graphic designer, just send me my artist album cover. Uh, another graphic designer just sent me a, um, the um, IG clip for my album. Um, I just left the um, picking up my merchandise for the album. Um, doing this interview, like I'm always doing something every day. Like you got to eat, sleep, and shit this shit to be successful. You get what I'm saying? And, and people don't know that. They just think, okay, they get. They do a little bit of nothing and it's supposed to be, nah, I don't work like that. You gotta really be dedicated to this shit and these niggas not dedicated, that's why it ain't working for them. So instead of them being dedicated and getting off their ass and grind, they wanna try to capitalize off the next nigga that is. Yeah. That's real shit. All right, well, Filthy, man, I appreciate you, man. Man, you know, I appreciate you, bro. Um, like I said, I'm a fan of what you do, man. Keep doing you. Keep being successful, man. Keep turning up, man. Keep winning, man. You know, it can only go up from here. You know what I'm saying? Once you know, um, get your mind straight on, 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 on positive shit, man. You, you, you're dealing with positive people, man. That's what's going, what you're going to attract. you dealing with negative people, you're going to attract negative. You know, that's just what it is, man. So, you know, i just been on some real focused shit. Staying out the way, you know, I got so many different things to do. I can't entertain everybody, you get what I'm saying? So, especially not entertaining none negative. You get what I'm saying? So, that's what my mind at with it. But, yeah, man, I appreciate you for having me, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Always a pleasure, man. All right. You know what I'm saying? I love what you do also, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I know you grinding, so. Make sure you check out this album, man. Motivational Purpose, January 30th. It's crazy, man. I ain't gonna lie, it's some crazy. I, I feel like I just keep getting better, you know, better every time. You know, I know I said that I wanna stop rapping, but it's just, you know, I feel like my love is just somewhere else, being behind the scenes, the boss, the CEO, of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. All right, filthy. We'll talk to you. I appreciate you, man. All right, bro. For sure, appreciate you. Later.